Two summers ago, our family lived through what we wickedly call the summer of death. Please do not be offended by this. You're allowed to laugh. <laughs> um, the family members who died that summer are the very ones who taught us to use dark humor as an excellent defensive weapon. I cared for my mother in the last weeks of her life, arranged it so that she could die at home instead of in an institution, and held her as her soul departed her body and went on to its next journey. A few weeks later, my husband and I sat vigil at his father's bedside and held that old gentleman's hands until finally he closed his eyes for the last time. We cried a lot that summer. It is a rare honor and privilege to be present at the death of your parent. My mother and my father-in-law taught us up till the moment of their last breath. Their passing gave us, my husband and I, a much needed wake up call. It was the first true understanding about how short and precious our time on earth is. After that summer, my beloved husband, he's the one who built that kick-ass writing cottage. Yeah, I'll show you online. Um, he and I developed a code phrase. When one of us goes off the deep end fussing about something that in the grand scheme of things is an utter waste of time and energy, the other partner smiles and says, baby, you're gonna die. <laughs> you're gonna die. These are not meant to be scary words. There is no point in being scared about something that is so, so inevitable. You're gonna die is an incantation a magical phrase that helps guide my feet back onto a life path that has integrity and true meaning. You're gonna die, you should use this at home, by the way, <laughs> will remind you of your responsibility, responsibility to disturb the universe while you still can. But how do you do this? How can you best disturb the universe, especially in those days and months after SCBWI National when you're not feeling the love, you're not feeling inspired. Stephen King wrote, sometimes you have to go on when you don't feel like it. And sometimes you're doing good work when it feels like all you're managing to do is to shovel shit from a sitting position. <laughs> this seems to be working for Mr. King. <laughs> He's one hell of a shit shoveler. Taking care of your muse helps. In my experience, the muse is easily frightened. She's very sensitive to criticism, fear, doubt, and rejection, the very things that come at us day after day after day. Now, picture, if you will, visualize, if you will, a shy four-year-old child wearing overalls or a dress or a Halloween costume. This child is almost a total stranger. Maybe you've seen her around town, maybe you know her auntie, and suddenly she gets dropped off at your house and you have to take care of her for an entire day. She's four. Now, how will you approach a child like this? Will you sternly list off all the things she's not allowed to do? Turn off the TV, turn off the internet, do not touch the chocolate. Will you give her a task and tell her how very disappointed you will be in her if she fails? For example, to write a certain number of words a day. <laughs> or a certain number of pages in a week. Are you going to play the wicked witch and turn her into a terrified scullery maid? If you treat her like that, she will not whisper any secrets in your ear. That shy, bewildered, honest, loving four-year-old is your muse. Your muse is you, the very best, creative, innocent, eager to grow part of you, and she deserves a lot of love and tender care. Surround yourself with the kinds of things that engage your playful, creative side. Know that a very good portion of what we do is magic. Someone sprinkled fairy dust on each one of us as we lay in our cradles. That's why we have these seeds in our belly. That's why they spin in the dark. Hold on to that magic and remember to have fun. Discipline can actually be fun. Discipline is a good thing, it is your friend. Imagine what life would be like if none of us were disciplined enough to brush our teeth regularly, or bathe, or obey traffic laws. 
Discipline creates order. Paradoxically, that order is required so that the chaos of art can unfold. Discipline provides the canvas. Inspiration supplies the paint. You create the art. 